once again and welcome into another edition of the JMAC Podcast. This time an episode of Did You Hear About This? Some of the unique stories out there that either made me laugh or made me think or made me wonder would I go for that? And uh, it has to do today with whether or not you would get a chip installed in your brain. Elon Musk thinks that you might want to do this. And this is what so many movies are made of and how things start off and then turn terribly, terribly wrong. But before we do that, there's a new service being provided by a real estate company. This is isoldmyhouse.com. They are offering a special service before you sell your house. That's because they conducted a survey of 5,000 Americans to gauge their belief in ghosts and haunted houses. They claim that 55% of those surveyed admit to believing in the supernatural and 61% wouldn't buy a house they suspected was haunted. So they decided to partner with an agency that will... Conduct an exorcism before you put your house on the market. The free service will be facilitated initially by a remote video call between the homeowner and their exorcist who will be able to diagnose the issue. I didn't know you could diagnose hauntings over video call, over Skype, but I guess you can. And then they'd offer advice on how to deal with any paranormal activity. In the case that a home visit is required, the homeowner and the exorcist can discuss costs moving forward. So if you think your home is haunted or you want to make sure that people touring your home don't wonder if the home is haunted, this is the service for you. Now let's get to this idea of whether or not you would have a chip installed in your brain. Maybe it depends on what the benefits are. Well, this is Elon Musk and another company that he has created. And the promises here or the end game, the goals seem very appealing to me anyway. And yes, I would sign up to do this. But before you decide, let me share with you what the neural link is for and what they expect to be able to happen in the future. Elon Musk unveiled Neuralink's implantable brain chip, the Link version 0.9. It's a brain-computer interface designed to be implanted directly into the brain by a surgical robot. Same-day surgery without a big incision or general anesthesia. You remove uh, about a coin-sized piece of skull, and, uh, and then you can just walk around right, after, right afterwards. It's pretty cool. The chip plugs into your brain directly via tiny microscopic threads. They're about one twentieth of the width of a human hair, and they connect with the neurons in your brain to receive and send electrical signals. Importantly, Neuralink says these electrodes won't damage your brain. If they're inserted very carefully so that the robot actually images the brain and makes sure to avoid any veins or arteries so that the electrodes can be inserted um, with no noticeable damage. It has an all-day battery life, wireless charging, and it's designed to wirelessly connect to your phone via Bluetooth with a range of five to 10 meters. We got to see a live reading of the neurons in the pig's brain firing in real time, specifically the neurons that were sending and receiving messages from her snout. Um, So what you're, the the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So this neural link connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, uh, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. There was talk of curing blindness by implanting the link in the visual cortex, treating mental health conditions like depression, anxiety and addiction, connecting the link to a heads-up display so you could walk around like the Terminator. And then there were basic ideas like, I don't know, telepathy, replaying your own memories, superhuman vision and the ability to see ultraviolet light. Oh, and connecting your brain and uploading it into a robot. I mean, this is obviously sounding increasingly like a Black Mirror episode. Everything that's encoded in memory, you could, uh, you could upload. You could basically store your memories um, as a backup and restore the memories. Um, and ultimately, you could potentially download them into a new body or into a robot body. The future is going to be weird. 
Yeah, you're telling me the future is going to be weird. Now, I have wanted this technology for a long time because I'm lazy, honestly. Um, So I would like to be able to upload things into my brain. And of course, I first got this idea from the movie The Matrix. Can you fly that thing? Not yet. Operator. Tank, I need a pilot program for a B-212 helicopter. Hurry. Let's go. Just like that. She gets the all the training and all the expertise she needs to fly a helicopter is uploaded right into her brain. What a world that would be. You want to learn a, lo- a new language? Upload. You just pay a fee. You want a degree? Upload. You just pay a fee. I mean, that would be amazing. And then, of course, there's the questions of immortality. If you could download your your entire being into a robot, now we're... Now we're really talking. Although I I don't want to live forever. That's not anything that I ever wanted. To me, life is kind of hard and it requires a lot of work. And like I said, I'm lazy. So I'm not looking for immortality in that way. If you are, fantastic. Let me know in the comments, would you have this chip installed on your brain if any of those promises would potentially come true? And uh, talking a little bit more about science here, we covered this uh, several months ago, actually about 157 days ago, this mysterious repeating bursts from space. And they happen in regular intervals, so much so that scientists have been able to predict when they will happen again. And they predicted 157 days ago that they would appear. And guess what? They just did. So they said, we'll see it again in around 160 days. And there's a lot of theories, but they're not sure what it is. These radio bursts, which astronomers first discovered in 07, have become one of the most intriguing celestial phenomena around. These pulses of radio waves flash at repeated intervals across the cosmos kind of like the light that emanates from a lighthouse. Some scientists have suggested they may have come from distant explosions in clouds of gas and dust created by a type of young neutron star. But no one has been able to confirm their actual origins. And why would the bursts happen at predictable intervals if that was the case? Now, we all know the answer, and it comes, of course, from Independence Day. Uh, I know why we have satellite disruption. All right, go ahead. Okay. uh, Let's say that you wanted to uh, coordinate with spaceships on different sides of the Earth. I couldn't send a direct signal, right? You're talking about line of sight. Yeah, that's right, exactly. The curve of the Earth prevents it. You'd need satellites to relay that signal in order to reach each ship. Well, I found a signal hidden inside our own satellite system. Excuse me, Mr. Preston. They're starting. They're using our own satellites against us. And the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. You're getting some insight into how I look at life. Yes, everything in my mind plays back to a movie. And that's how it should be, of course. And finally this, if you ever wanted definitive proof that owning an iPhone is better than owning an Android, here it is. This study sought to find out who does better in dating apps. Those who own an iPhone or those who own an Android. And the results, we already knew. I mean, didn't we? We already kind of know or knew. Uh, this study says Apple products were up to 76 more, 76% more likely to land a dating app match over other smartphones. The study included a wide array of various devices from tech brands and found some quite interesting information. 
pertaining to whom is swiping right. This is from Apple Insider. A study conducted by Compare My Mobile looked at data from more than 50,000 dating apps, swipes across 15 major cities around the world. The profiles were identical in each case, apart from the tech depicted. As a control, the study compared the results against a profile containing no tech at all. It's important to note that the study also opened up matching for all genders, including non-binary. However, there was not enough data outside of male and female to make genuine observations for this study. Per the results, the Apple brand is your best bet at getting a positive swipe towards a match. Being listed as an iPhone owner increased a person's chances of getting right swiped by 76%. If they owned an Apple Watch, 61%. If they had AirPods, 41%. (laughs) So the writer of this article suggests that your profile picture should be of you holding an Apple Watch or wearing an Apple Watch, talking on an Apple iPhone, and wearing Apple iPods. And you're guaranteed to find the love of your life. We all do that. iPhone owners, we already we already knew, right? Hey, take a minute and subscribe and like and share this podcast. We really appreciate that. And also, please make a one-time donation or a monthly donation to help support me bringing Fearless Honesty to you every single day. You can find out how to do so in the description of this podcast or video. And thank you for joining us. And uh, go out and get yourself an iPhone.